Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike, and today we're going to be going over a simple method to automatically back up your PFSense configuration using a Windows machine. So, maybe you've reached the point that you've made a few configurations in PFSense that you would like to not lose, and although it does have a built-in backup system, it really only automatically backs up to the installation disk of your PFSense machine. This is fine if your PFSense instance is virtualized and you take backups of the VM, but if it's a standalone machine, this doesn't protect against a hard drive failure on the machine itself. I'm sure there are a few different ways to go about this, such as using a utility like wgit or cron. However, since my file server is already running Windows, I figured this would be the simplest approach for me. I'll also note here that this doesn't require the location to be an SMB share, as the backup will be executed on the Windows machine itself, although you can set the target to a mapped SMB share on the Windows instance. So the first thing we'll want to do is log into our pfSense machine, as we have here and set up a new user since we'll most likely not want to use the admin account for this task. So go up here to system and then to user manager. Here we'll click add. And for the username, I'll use backup, then enter a password and confirm. and then we'll leave the rest of this information alone for now. Scroll down and click Save. Now go over to the Groups tab and click Add. And we'll call the group name Backups Group. Leave the scope as local. The description will be for taking backups. And we'll go ahead and add the user backup to this group by selecting them and clicking move to members. And then save. That will create the group. So now let's go back into the group by clicking on the edit button to the right. And now we'll go down to assign privileges and click the green add button on the bottom right. And we're looking for one specific privilege that will be web CFG diagnostics backup and restore. So select that. You'll scroll down and hit save, and then save again. And that should be all for user creation. Let's take a quick look at backup and restore in PFSense. So first, the simple manual way to download an XML backup of a PFSense configuration can be done by going into PFSense, and then going to Diagnostics, then Backup and Restore. Let's say that we want to download everything, so we will uncheck do not backup RRD data, and then we're going to check backup extra data, since just a few megabytes of extra data shouldn't be too much of a hassle, unless you're running something like hundreds of instances of PFSense and backing them up daily. You can also choose to encrypt the file if you would like, but I'll leave that unchecked for now. Once you click download configuration as XML, it will download a file locally to your computer, and this can be used to restore the configuration to the point at which you created this backup. And that can be done even from a fresh install of PFSense. If you wanted to restore from a backup, you would navigate to the same page, and then go down to Restore Backup, and find the XML file that you would like to restore from. In this case, we have just the one. Then you would open it. If you like, you can choose a specific restore area, for instance, if you wanted to restore the configuration for a specific service like OpenVPN, your DHCP settings, your firewall, and so forth, or you can just choose all, which is what you would choose if you were doing a bare metal restore for a new installation. Here you'll select whether the file is encrypted or not and enter the password, and then you would click Restore Configuration, which would take a few minutes, and then it would restore to the backed up configuration. This backup process can be automated on Windows platforms thanks to the work of Cohen Zomers and Badbread over at GitHub. Note here, it may go without saying, but the computer executing this task will need to be on the same network as the PFSense router you're backing up, so do keep that in mind. And I'll be sure to leave any links I use in the description below. So let's go ahead and navigate over to the releases page of Cohen Zomers PFSense backup and then download the 64-bit exe file for Windows. And then we'll head over to Bread's PFSense Auto Backup, also at GitHub, and then go over to Code, and we'll download it as a zip. And if the PFSense Backup exe file is having issues downloading, then you'll need to go to the context menu on the right, select Keep, Show More, 
and then keep anyway. That is a quote unquote feature courtesy of Windows Smart Screen. So now that you have both of these files downloaded, go ahead and open the folder that you downloaded them to and then extract the pfSense auto backup. And then you want to make sure that the contents that you have extracted and the exe file are located in the same folder. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder at the root directory of my C drive and just call it pfSense backup. And then I'm going to drag over the files that I've downloaded and the files that I've extracted. So here we have all of our files in the same folder at the root of our C drive. Another thing to note is that the script we will be using will be looking specifically for a file called pfSenseBackup.exe. So we will need to rename this executable to pfSenseBackup. Once all of that is in place, we will also need to make a few edits to the PowerShell script that we'll be using. So go ahead and right click on backup pfSense.ps1 and select edit. The first 15 lines of this script will provide various configuration options, so let's quickly go through those. The first is backup directory, which is the location where we want to store the backup files. This can be anywhere, but for now we will just leave it this way, which will dump the backup files into the folder we created earlier, and that contains all of our scripts and executables. Please note that if you do change it, make sure to leave a trailing backslash as indicated by the script, or the script will not run and you will get an error instead. The second option is apt-dir, and this is for if you place the executable in a separate directory. This is where you will specify where that executable is. Next you have username and pw, which are the username and password for the pfSense account that will be grabbing this information. The user will have to have the same permissions that we assigned to the group we created earlier. And then pf address is going to be the local IP address of your pfSense box, so let's change that now to 192.168.1.1. The retention is going to be how many days to keep old backup files. Make sure to enter this as a negative value. I'm going to leave it as the default 30 for now. Under file name, you can edit how the backup files themselves will be named. I'll leave that as default as well. And min backups will determine the minimum number of backups to keep. I'll leave that as five for now. You can change that to whatever number you like. I tend not to use the push options, so I will leave that all as default for now. And everything below those options should typically not need to be adjusted. So one more thing to note is that on line 22, you may need to add an additional argument if you use HTTPS to access your pfSense web configurator, and that will be space plus space, and then the argument will be quote space dash use SSL space unquote and it has to be written using exactly that syntax or it won't recognize it as a proper argument and we'll go ahead and save that and then exit out of the PowerShell ISE and once all of that's done you can give this a test run by right clicking on the script and then selecting run with PowerShell and if everything is configured correctly you should get an XML file that contains a backup of your pfSense configuration. Now there's one last step and that is to make this happen automatically. For that we're going to use Windows Task Scheduler. So in the start menu go ahead and type Task Scheduler and enter. And then we're just going to create a task. We'll call it pfSense Backup. And then here we'll select run whether the user is logged in or not. And then select do not store password. Now go over to the triggers tab and select new. And here we'll set how often we want it to run. I like this to run at least daily, so we will choose daily and then have it recur every one day. And I would like for it to run at approximately one o'clock AM. Again, there are many settings you can mess around with here based on your own needs and how often you would like to have this backed up. These are fairly straightforward, so I won't go over them now. I'll just leave it here and select OK. Now we'll go over to the Actions tab and then create a new action by clicking New. 
the action will be start a program and then we'll click browse here we're going to be looking for the pfSense backup script so that'll be C pfSense backup and backup pfSense.ps1 then we'll open it so here what we're going to do is actually cut that location that we have found and then under add arguments we'll type dash f and then we'll paste in that location and then in the program slash script box we will just type powershell then hit ok and i believe the conditions and settings can be left default for this one so go ahead and click ok and then the task should be created under our task scheduler library and you can see here pfSense backup is created now you can go ahead and give it a test run by going down here to the run button and click and as you can see it has created another export of the configuration of pfSense so it looks like our task is working properly and based on the schedule we gave it should back up automatically once per day all right i believe that will be all for now as always thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps the channel grow and if you like you can join me over at the brand new h2dc discord server for which i'll leave a link in the description let me know if you have any questions or if you run into any issues, and I will see you in the next video.